Okay, here we are on the Hackaday blog for the project and the last update was with the Lime SDR and uh, I bolted the Lime SDR onto this uh, green PCB here and soldered on some sliders and some potentiometers and bolted on this little orange PCB which allows the SPI signals to come out of the FPGA here on this cable and into an Arduino DU which is bolted underneath the PSB here. So the DU can control the Lime SDR through its uh, registers and we have a little TFT screen. Uh, the Lime SDR is set up at the moment as a signal generator for testing my own homegrown boards which are here on band 13. Band 13 is what Verizon uses in the USA and uh, these homegrown boards need to be sent to the USA for testing in the Hackaday 2017 prize since uh, yeah we've reached the finals which is like uh, really good and uh, if it uh, goes to win, maybe it'll be in the top five or something like that, it can uh, get a substantial uh, cash prize. So uh, this is worth doing and it's be good to get some feedback as well. Uh, these here are the duplexes and for band 13 we need to change these duplexes. It's, other than that it's all the same. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to meet the deadline and get those boards sent off. If we go back in time, uh, I want to have a look at the um, most pressing part of the project at the moment. Um, this is to do with the transmission of frequencies from the mobile phone to the base station. And I built this little test rig to monitor the output power from my phone. And then I went on a bit of an expedition. I actually parked up 50 metres away from the base station and took readings uh, just to show how my phone was interacting with the base station. So when I'm close to the base station the phone transmits at a lower power by the looks of it and then I drove out into the countryside found a point where the 4G signal was really low and yeah it looks like the phone is actually working a much higher power. So this is quite important because it seems to show that the base station can actually control the power that the uh, phone is giving off so it can control the phone's signal strength which is kind of a self-preservation tactic I think. Right, uh, I'm just going to skip that and go to here because this is the first time that I used my own homegrown PCBs to transmit a signal from a phone to the base station and here this is just a few random frequencies at the start a few random spikes but then the variable gain amplifier on the PCB was gradually turned up and you can show that the um, signal strength on the external antenna slowly increased as you'd expect but then from the results of the previous experiment uh, it seems to uh, taper off and reach a plateau. So at this point the variable gain amplifier is still being turned up but the base station appears to be controlling the phone itself and keeping the signal strength steady. So there's actually no point in turning up the VGA beyond the, this point here. Okay now this shows the actual block diagram of the uh, structure. It doesn't matter if it's this is the Lime SDR or my homegrown part of the project. Um, pretty much the same block diagram um, except that if I try to use one chip on the Lime SDR it uses um, numer numerically controlled oscillators which apparently may or may not cause a problem to the base station. I've actually been corresponding with uh, somebody who installs repeaters professionally and they said to, it's something to watch out for 
So um, what actually happens in the uh, base station RX part of the circuit is the phone sends a signal. It's picked up by the internal antennae. Uh, this is a duplexer which is split into two. So in uh, base station RX, signal goes through this side of the duplexer through a bandpass filter to the variable gain amplifier. So we don't actually need to use uh, low noise amplifiers because the signal is so strong coming through here. It only needs a small amount of amplification. It then comes out of uh, another bandpass filter and through the external antenna and upper pole and then uh, transmits to the base station. So in this part of the project where we are at this point in time we're, yeah, we're looking at the base station receive and uh, I've been uh, advised to be aware of uh, the amount of noise that is created through this part of the circuit so be careful about the noise uh, and then uh, also be careful using up convert down convert uh, with the line SDR as uh, this could create noise and uh, this is my own theory it could even create uh, timing issues uh, I really don't understand how the base station um, works uh, so I don't know if timing issues are a problem or not, and it would be really great to talk to somebody who does know something about how base stations work so that I can uh, use the Lime SDR without uh, the possibility of causing it any harm. And so, next thing to look at here is the Lime SDR working as a basic simplex cell phone um, repeater. We're going to take the signal from the base station and uh, capture it at the top of a pole and amplify it for use inside a building. So this just shows the Lime SDR working in simplex mode. And uh, a little bit of code to pick up values off the of the slider, nothing um, unusual about that, other than it's written in hex. Um, there's some code there to turn the TX pad on or off at, at a bit of a later stage with a toggle switch or something. And um, serial print. And these are the. This is the code for uh, writing to the line SDR, and this is the code when reading from it. Very simple. Couldn't be simpler, really. So, uh, what should we should try? Let's just have a quick look at the phone again. Let's look at the levels on that. Yeah, 112 dBm. Not much change there. Sometimes the phone can be a bit um, strange. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's actually 118. So this app on the phone isn't actually terribly accurate. It needs to be refreshed every now and again. So anyway, we're on the 100, minus 114. Let's go over here. Nothing much changed here, but if we just edge the slider up a little bit, remember this slider is actually controlling the um, the Arduino. But oh, I can hear something. I can hear some whining. We've got some extra strong bars on the. Uh, waterfall there. So I'll just edge the slider up again with this hand here. See if we can get a bit more signal. There we go. And a bit more. There she goes. So we've got loads of signal now. So let's see if we're getting anything, any response on the phone. Nothing yet. Sometimes I just have to refresh it. Turning it on and off. Let's just give it a little bit more on the slider. There it goes. 
minus 97 dBm on the phone and uh, just to prove it still works and we can actually receive data let's have a look at a, a YouTube video uh, find here and let's well, I can't play that one that one's already downloaded let's try this one just uh, randomly playing a video really this is Lime's DR board from Lime Microsystem it can work from 100 kilohertz to See that's uh, downloading it nicely. Gigahertz. It has two receivers and and um, just to finish off, let's go forwards in time to my more recent video test of the uh, my homegrown transceiver. And uh, just to prove that this gadget works on a base station transmit. So if we then come back here and press the right hand button, you should see a dramatic change. Oh, press and hold it. There we go. So looking over on the Spectrum Analyzer, we've got a very large change in intensity there, and if we look at the phone, we've got minus 81 decibels and 5 bars on the phone. At this very particular point in time, I've got the Lime SDR rigged up as a signal generator and I've got these uh, PCBs being made in China uh, literally as we speak and uh, I've added a, another uh, bit of functionality uh, RSSI indicator there which joins the main circuit by means of a coupler it should look something like the previous board except it won't have these um, errors um, these um, circuit boards actually worked really nicely on uh, base station TX gave it a nice clean signal so I'm quite confident that the concept itself is okay. I now need to work on the base station RX and for that I could do with some information from the people who operate the base stations themselves.